Some animals are not confusing because they look the same. They are confusing because we learned the wrong shortcuts early on. Once biology enters the conversation, those shortcuts collapse fast. You think you're looking at a twin, but you're actually looking at a total system rebuild. We are conditioned to look for beauty, while the biosphere is only looking for good enough to not die before Tuesday. Hardware versus software. Design versus disaster. Let's look at the specs of these biological glitches. Water or land. The Testudin's bug. The Order Testudines is a 220 million year old design that hasn't received a significant UI update since the Triassic. We see a shell and assume a single species. In reality, we're looking at two completely different hardware solutions for the same bug. How to exist while being a walking brick. Tortoises are the heavy duty mainframes of the land. They operate on a logic of pure, agonizing endurance. Their shells are high domed, architectural vaults designed to survive the bite force of apex predators that eventually give up out of sheer boredom. This isn't just armor, it's a metabolic fortress. A Galapagos tortoise can survive a year without food or water by downclocking its internal processor to almost zero. Its heart beats only a few times per minute when resting. That's not resilience. That's a battery life that makes modern technology look like a joke. They utilize columnar, elephantine legs because moving 500 pounds of bone and indifference requires a vertical weight-bearing structure. They have zero buoyancy. They don't swim. They simply wait for the terrain to become less liquid. If you throw a tortoise into a pond to save it, you aren't a hero. You are a physics-based executioner. Turtles, specifically the aquatic variants, view the shell as a drag coefficient problem. They traded the impenetrable fortress update for hydrodynamic efficiency. Their shells are flat, streamlined, and lightweight often with flexible bridges to allow for better lung expansion during deep dives. Sea turtles have evolved specialized salt glands near their eyes to excrete excess sodium from the seawater they ingest. It looks like they are crying over the state of the ocean. In reality, it's just high-pressure biological plumbing. Their limbs are paddles, optimized for the density of water and practically useless for terrestrial locomotion. If you see one on a beach, it's not sunbathing. It's a maritime vessel that has run aground and is currently experiencing a total mechanical failure of its propulsion system. They are fast in the water because they have to be on land. They are just a data entry error. Smile or silence, the cetacean error. Humans project personality onto dolphins because of a structural glitch in their mandible that looks like a smile. It isn't an emotion, it's just skull geometry. The confusion between delphinity and phocoenity comes from our inability to distinguish between broadcast and stealth hardware. Dolphins are the extroverts of the ocean. They are loud, social, and operate on high-frequency whistles and clicks that can be heard for miles. Their dorsal fins are falcate, curved like a sports car's spoiler to stabilize them during high-speed maneuvers. They possess conical teeth, designed specifically to grip and rotate slippery fish like biological pliers. Their sonar is a weaponized sensory array, capable of seeing through sand and flesh. They don't perform for us because they like us. They perform because they are highly intelligent social manipulators who have figured out that humans are a reliable source of low effort calories. Porpoises are the introverts that dolphins bullied in evolutionary high school. They are shorter, sturdier, and have spade-shaped teeth designed for crushing rather than grabbing. They lack the rostrum, the beak, that dolphins use for social signaling. But the real technical divergence is the encryption. Porpoises communicate in narrow-band high-frequency clicks. These sounds are positioned at a frequency of about 130 kilohertz, a range that killer whales literally cannot hear. A porpoise is essentially a dolphin that went into a witness protection program and upgraded its signal encryption to avoid being eaten. They don't want to meet you. They don't want to jump through hoops 
and they certainly don't want to be the background of your vacation photos. Born ready or raised safe. The Lagomorph deployment. If you look at a field and see a bunny, you are likely ignoring a massive difference in deployment strategy. Rabbits and hares are both lagomorphs, but they represent two fundamentally different philosophies of risk management and hardware reliability. Rabbits are the masters of infrastructure. Their survival strategy is built on real estate and social redundancy. They are born altricial, which is biological speak for completely useless at launch. They are naked, blind, and dependent on a burrow system that would make a bunker architect jealous. A rabbit doesn't need to be fast at birth because it has a hole in the ground. Their ears are shorter because they spend half their lives in tunnels where long ears are a structural liability. They are social, building colonies to share the cognitive load of predator detection. It's a strategy of collective security and high-speed reproduction to offset the inevitable loss of individual units in the field. Hares are born in hard mode. They don't build bunkers. They are born precocial, fully furred, eyes open, and ready to sprint at 70 kilometers per hour within minutes of leaving the womb. While a rabbit hides from a threat, a hare outruns it until the threat's heart fails. Their ears are significantly longer to dissipate the massive amounts of heat generated during high-speed chases across open plains. Their hind legs are over-engineered kinetic levers, packed with fast-twitch muscle fibers that require constant caloric input. A hare is a solitary specialist that bets everything on its own hardware. If a rabbit is a civilian in a bunker, a hare is a paratrooper dropped behind enemy lines with nothing but its own legs and a hope for a high-speed exit. Brains or speed? Cephalopod anarchy. If you want to see where the source code really diverged into madness, look at cephalopods. They are what happens when you give a nervous system too much autonomy and zero central oversight. They are the closest thing to alien hardware we have on this planet. Octopuses are a miracle of decentralized processing. Two-thirds of their neurons are located in their arms. Each arm is essentially a drone with its own onboard AI, capable of hunting, tasting, and reacting to stimuli even if severed from the central brain. They have no internal skeleton, no legacy bones to hold them back. Their only hard part is a chitinous beak. If the beak fits through a hole, the entire consciousness fits through the hole. They are liquid intelligence, capable of solving complex puzzles, opening child-proof jars, and recognizing individual human faces. They usually use this intelligence to identify which specific researcher to spitefully spray with water when their enclosure is a few minutes late on maintenance. Squid are the missiles to the octopus's locksmith. They possess a pen, a hard, internal structure made of chitin that gives them a fixed, torpedo-like shape. They aren't trying to squeeze through keyholes. They are trying to reach Mach 1 underwater. While an octopus has eight arms, a squid features ten. Eight arms plus two specialized, long-distance hunting tentacles. This is a significant armament upgrade for a predator that hunts in the open ocean. Their movement is powered by a high-pressure muscular siphon that acts like a jet engine. It's an expensive way to travel, calorically speaking, but in the deep blue, speed is the only firewall that works. One is built for stealth and strategy. The other is a kinetic projectile that doesn't solve problems. It just outruns them. Nature doesn't care about your aesthetic categories or how you label your folders. It only cares about caloric efficiency and not being eaten before reproductive maturity. The labels are for us. The survival is for them. Stay curious. Or don't. The biosphere will keep glitching either way.